everyone. Thanks for joining me for the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mom AJ, model, actress, and social entrepreneur. Circumstances are temporary. Your purpose is not. And though we may all have been dealt with different circumstances in life, our experiences as women is universal. This is a safe space for women to be able to divulge their personal stories, share their life lessons, and tell us how they overcame their various obstacles. The goal here is to empower women to fulfill their life purpose by learning from others. Join the movement that celebrates the tenacity of women healing through storytelling. Hi guys, welcome back to the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mommy AJ, your host. And as always, make sure to watch the video on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. And just let us know what you want to hear, what guests you want to see from, and uh, what you want to what you want to talk about. I want to I want to like, ha- yes, I want to have real conversation and real follow up to our past episodes. So don't be shy. Let me know your comments and like questions and whatnot, and I'll be sure to answer them in the next one. Today, I have with me Aki Lanier. Yes, Did I yes, say the yes. same right? It's Lanier. Lanier, it okay. Is, yeah. Because I'm like, it sounds French, so I yeah, said it, it French. Yeah, the, the origin is French, okay. actually, but Lanier. Okay. In Tennessee, that's, yeah. Okay, she, she <laughs> went with the Tennessee. That Tennessee. Okay, how we say in Tennessee is Lanier. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Yes, man. I love your accent. Thank you so oh much, Monet. I love you, period, girl. Oh, I love you, period. <laughs> Stop. Um, how I met Aki, we actually met wor- working. Yes. Um, and I just remember she was just such a kind face to see. You just had a presence about you. You were just so like light. Ooh, Literally, like just light. I and like you that. were just so kind and and I, I just was dr- drawn to you. And we, I think um, we just started talking and I was like, oh my God, this, um, this woman is just amazing. Her accent, first of all, then her eyes and her beautiful face. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm, fall- I'm in love. Give it I'm in to love. me, give it all. So we're talking and talking. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my God, you're, you're, uh, you know, you're a Christian, yes. you're big in your faith. You have a son and like, you you know, we talked about your family a little bit and I just, I, everything about you, I was like, I love. So thank you so much for accepting my invitation to come and talk to me about your life pretty much. Honestly, first and foremost, I need to give credit where credit is due, girl. I absolutely adore you. I adore the human being that you are, the love that you give, the like seriously, like the knowledge that you have, like um, your willingness to be open and honest with like with the world because you have such a huge following. And the truth is, is that you could be living life for you and yet you choose to do so many other things for so many other people. And so like, I adore you so much. much. (laughs) And I don't say that often. Thank you. (laughs) I adore you. You are beautiful from inside out. So thank you for even having me here and wanting to even get to know me more to like have this conversation. Yes. Girl, we must. I'm excited. I'm so (laughs) excited. We must. And thank you honestly for, for saying that, like it, it really touched my heart because sometimes you wonder what the hell am I doing any Girl, of this yes. for? Like, Absolutely. why am I doing certain things? But um, you just have to just remember, like, your why and exactly your comment was a why. Like, mm. people see people see you. Absolutely, people see what you're doing. So don't ever be discouraged. And that's one thing I have to remind myself each and every day. Like. People are watching. Someone yes. is is watching you. And yeah. just from you living your life, they're being inspired mm-hmm. or they're being, you know, Im- motivated or encouraged to keep on. And that is fulfilling enough for me. Yeah. So I appreciate you saying that Absolutely. so much. Um, man, there's so much. I just want to like, I don't know where to start because like <laughs> so it made me want, it was making me think about um, before we get into, into things like make me think about blind faith, a message that Mm. I've I've been, I feel like I've been getting more more and more from God Mm -hmm. is, is, and I'm, and I've been learning to listen to myself, learning to listen to my intuition so much more and, and being strong in that Mm. is so like different. Mm -hmm. And like, um, the message I'm hearing more and more is having blind faith. So sometimes 
you don't know what the heck you're doing or why. Right, right, right. But you just have this feeling of, I have to do it because yeah. it's in me to do it and I, I have to get it out. And that's what blind faith is. I don't know why I'm doing it, what I'm doing even, what the next steps are. But Martin Luther King, that it was him that said, um, faith is having, is not seeing the whole staircase, but still taking the step. And so that really hits me because I'm just like, I've been feeling more and more blind faith, blind faith, just doing yes. and not doubting. Yeah. See, just going for it. That, see, that's the thing. I feel like that um, nowadays where people are so purpose driven, right? So it's this idea of like, I need to know my purpose. I need to know what it's going to be. And, and, and the truth is, is there is no there there. You know what I'm saying? It, there is no, it's almost like, well, when I get there, then I'm going to be able to. And, and honestly, there is no one path to anything. So what we, um, what we think we might be trying to chase after, right? Which is, uh, which is this purpose, but then you kind of start to just, um, try to make it happen on your own. And the truth is, uh, you know, personally, I feel, um, is that we can have all the plans in the world that we think we might have, um, but then we have no room for faith, right? So if we can do it on our own, more than likely it's too small of a dream for us to even accomplish. Um, you know what I mean? And yeah. so um, if you don't have faith to be able to just step out and do it, then we're always staying in the safe zone. And in the safe zone, there's no room to like really do much of anything but wiggle and just um, – do an everyday routine, which is great too. Like, honestly, I feel like that if a routine, cause a routine usually works better for me. I feel like I get more done, but also to be able to step out, um, and do something that you just know, like, okay, I know that wasn't me. Cause why would I ever even want to do that? Right. Um, and there's so many things that hold us back, whether it be, what are people going to think? What are people going to say? Like, how is that going to look? But then you, you have to, you have to choose to be able to say, okay, if this is what the Lord's put in me, then clearly there's something there, right? It's the, it's the stretching, um, and that uncomfortable place, yes. right? That you are able to like, there's a little bit more, there's a little bit more. And so I think that if we're constantly living in the purpose, you know, like, well, when I get there or like, that has to be my purpose, then we miss the right now. And you miss the living right now. And it's the small things. It's exactly. It's those small things that help you get to, like, all of a sudden you're like, whoa, like, I'm here. Do you I'm know what here. I mean? Instead you look of. back and you're like, wow. Exactly. Oh, it's such a beautiful place to be. It is. And one thing you just said that I'm like, in my head, I was just like, oh, my God, yes, yes, is, is if you can do it all on your own, mm. then your vision is not big enough. Too small. It's too small yeah. because, and that's the thing about having that faith, that having that space for that faith because, and I was reading this book that was literally talking about the same thing is like, if you cannot, if, if you trust yourself to do everything, then you don't need God. Ooh, exactly. Then you don't need God. Exactly. And who are we as humans not to need God? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, then, then that's if scary. you don't need God, then your vision must be too small. Because you're not giving yourself even space to have faith in something bigger than you, to know that something bigger than you right. can happen, Absolutely. or bigger than you can you can fathom oh can happen. Because I know my plans. When I make my plans, Girl, they are bye. never what God <laughs> planned. They are never what actually Ooh. happens. Oh. But it, I get it. We like to plan things to feel like we're in control. Absolutely. To feel like we, you know. We, we have a grasp on things, but sometimes not having that grasp as scary as it, as scary yeah. as it feels yeah. is, is so good. And just relinquish, relinquishing that yeah. control and surrendering yeah. to the moment, like yeah. you were saying, just yeah. being in the moment is just so like powerful. And I'm learning to sit there a little more. You know, it, it's... And it's not even so much of just like a free fall, like, yeah. oh, whatever happens, Yeah, happens, whatever happens, right? No, no. So, I, again, I personally... You must have your plans. Y yes. You know, <laughs> like, at least live with intention. <laughs> live with intention. You know what I mean? Live yes. with intention. You have somewhat of an idea. You might not know exactly what the yeah. whole plan or the picture is, but yeah. you, 
you know what you don't want to be doing. What you because if I had it my way, girl, I would have married at sixteen, had like fifteen kids with little old whoever it was, my little tiny little hometown a hot mess right right so like i thank god every day thank god he gives us what we need Girl, and not on. what we necessarily come want come on yes. come on so um definitely live with intention but you have to be able to to have that room um to grow and to move and for things to shift or to change right um that was me it was not even that long ago a couple months ago um i was in such a rough place um in in life and if you know me or if you're around me people are like oh my gosh she's always so happy and so positive right and so being in this place of just like oh, mentally it was draining and you know I'm a, I'm a single mom I've you know I've got a lot of wear a lot of hats and have to do a lot of things and um and on my own with zero help from anybody that's financially that's physically um and so I was just in such a bad spot so I had to go back home like to reset. Um, and I remember just being in this place of praise and worship. And there was a song that had come on. And as I'm like up on this mountaintop on this cliff and I'm like belting out the words, no, this is actually in Tennessee. Tennessee, Yeah. This is in Tennessee girl. Yes. Hawaii. (laughs) Um, but I remember belting out this song. Um, it's called refiner Mm -hmm. and the words were, I want to be tried by fire, purified, take whatever you desire, Lord, here's my life. And so here I am, I'm like singing this song from the depths of my soul, like belting it out, right? And then it hit me at that moment, like what I was actually singing or what I was saying. And if you break it down, I want to be tried by fire, purified. Um, In order for things to be purified, it has to go through the fire, right? And the fire burns, it sucks, it hurts. It's a difficult place to be in. But you have to go through the fire in order for the purity to come out, right? Um, Take, girl, oh, it's such a, it's it's a painful place to be in, but it's also the most beautiful place to be in because this is where things come out that we might not like about ourselves that we may have like pushed down so deep because you're trying to forget about it and you're trying to move on, but without actually fixing the issue or a problem or addressing it. Um, So it's such a, it's a difficult place to be in, but man, when you come out of that on the other side of that is the purification and it's the, it's the place where you're polished and you're shined and you know, you know, that like, I've come through this, right? And it's not even to say that I have arrived, but it's more so of, um, you know, suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance develops uh, character, and character develops hope, right? So when you're, gr- come on. Run that back before you continue, please. <laughs> yes, so suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope. And so, um you really to build character um you have to go through some things girl I always say I'm like if you ain't been through things I don't know if I can trust you with anything (laughs) because I've been through some things (laughs) in life um and so if you've always had it easy it's pretty easy to go through life is like lofty and I feel like Mm -hmm. we as human beings go through so much anyway and you know what you've been through in life um doesn't diminish what I've been through in life. What I've been through in life doesn't diminish what someone else does because it it could be something as huge um, or as small. Right, um, exactly. But it hits us differently. It does, it does. And there's no, like, it's not a pain Olympics. Exactly. You know, like some people think, oh, Oh. someone's been through something so bad, so I can't feel bad about my problems. No, that's not what we're saying at all. Like, Anything that you go through in your own circumstances is very valid. Um, We all, you know, we all have different circumstances. We're all born into different circumstances. However, um, how do you come out of that? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you come out of that? We're all going to have different problems. And something that might not be as big of a deal to me could be a a mountaintop to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So this, like I said, there's no pain Olympics here. It's not, I went through this and oh my God, I was, oh. What are you complaining about? You know, I, I this and that and the yeah. other. And there is, there is none of that. And there no. is no like, oh, okay, so I shouldn't, I can't feel bad and I'm not supposed to feel bad no, because what she bad. went through. Yeah, 100%. exactly. You can feel bad. A hundred percent. Because like you said, 
what I may be struggling with might not be your struggle. That's it. You know, that's it. And so, and, and that's okay too. That's okay. So, but we yeah. all go through our own things and it's fine. Oh yeah. Recognize it. Feel it. Ooh, always feel it. Feel it. I advocate that so much. Um, you know, I am a Christ follower. Um, I love the, again, I know what I was before. And so I know who I am now is nothing but him. So I always give him all the glory for anything in life. Um, but yeah, girl, it's it's one of those things. Oh, shucks, I forgot where I was at. This pressure produces diamonds. Mm, that part. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I lost it. So. It's fine. Sorry. It's totally fine. Like I love, I love what we're at, and I'm just like that's that's what's going through my head. Mm-hmm. That's what's going through my t- head. And I'm just so glad that you said those um, beautiful, beautiful words. I feel like I just want to know more about you. Like, let's get to your, you know what I'm saying? Like your personal journey and where all this insight and wisdom comes from. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, wisdom comes from time and learned experiences. You know what I mean? You're not just, it's not just coming from anywhere, you know, came from somewhere. So what, what happened? What have, you know, where, where, where did it all start for you? Okay. Oh my word. Okay, so <laughs> Oh my word. <laughs> oh my, my aunt says word. that. <laughs> She's so cute. She's a little British lady. British <laughs> oh my word. Um so I grew up in a tiny, tiny town in Tennessee. Um, you know, I from just looking at me and my face, uh, a lot of times I get the whole like, what are you, right? Is is the question. I'm a human being, right? I'm a woman. Um but so my mother is Filipino and Hawaiian, and my dad is African American. He's black, um, descendants from Cameroon, Africa, uh, right? Which is a French speaking colony, so therefore, Lanyes, right? Um, but my mom grew up in the Philippines as well, and so um, there's all of that. But I was born in Turkey. Um, my father was in the Air Force, okay, uh, okay. but raised in Tennessee. Wow. So we're like all over the place. Right? I love it. Um, Wait, so where did your parents meet? Right. <laughs> so they met in the Philippines. My dad was stationed okay, in the Philippines. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mom is full Filipino? No, she's Filipino-Hawaiian. Oh, I see. I see. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. So um, growing up in Tennessee, it was, it, was, it was interesting and it was really difficult because you know, I wasn't black enough for the black people or mm. white enough for the white people. Mm. Like I was mm-hmm. there. And mm-hmm. then usually if there was a mix, what people commonly know mm. um, is black and white, mm-hmm. but I wasn't black and white. My mom is Filipino and Hawaiian. So my family was as different as different got right, right in my right. hometown. Um, and people like what they like, they like what they know. Exactly. Period. They like what they know. And so growing up was really difficult for me. I, I was that one where I was like, hi, can I help you? You know what I'm like? Mm-hmm. I, I almost, I felt as though I had to be so hard yeah. and truth be told, like I did, like yeah. my dad, he taught us to like, you know, the whole, um, hands on the wheels. If you get pulled over mm-hmm, thing like mm-hmm. that was my reality. Wow. And, and he had to explain this to wow. us. And, and I Still. say, oh, it, come on. Wow. And I say us because I had an older brother. Yeah. Um, we were 18 months apart, wow. best friend in the mm-hmm. entire world. Um, but his skin was darker than mine, mm-hmm. right? He had like your skin complexion. Mm-hmm. And so if you've looked at us, mm-hmm. we oftentimes got mistaken as, as boyfriend and girlfriend and we were together and gotcha. not brother and sister right. um because my skin is a little bit so lighter. lighter I have this. you know gray blue eyes mm-hmm. colored eyes and he was very much just mm-hmm. dark skinned mm-hmm. you know dark eyes mm-hmm. um so growing up in my hometown was was difficult interesting it was like unless unless you know it's sport season because then like everybody thinks you're cool because you're good in sports mm-hmm. or you know what mm-hmm. I mean so there was the whole um racism thing there was mm-hmm. the whole and my dad actually taught me <laughs> I love you, daddy. <laughs> but um, his motto was hit them before they hit you. Oh. Right? So, um, and he's military so we ain't too. taking girl, nah, no shit nah. Nah. He taught me how to fight. That's okay. what he taught me. So I was Aki Balboa. I know that's right. Um, <laughs> like, Aki don't Balboa. get it twisted. Don't I, get it twisted. Girl, I know I'm soft-spoken, mm-hmm. but like, I'm holy enough to pray for you, but I'm hood enough to swing on you. So don't, <laughs> don't come for me. <laughs> Did you catch that? Just saying. And I got the reach. <laughs> Wait. 
That was too funny. I'm holy enough to pray for you, but what? But I'm enough to swing, swing on, on you. you. Like, the Lord is still working on me, okay? <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I'm cracking up. <laughs> it's the truth. Like, here's the thing. No, because I feel it and I see Come on. it. Like, you're, you, you you know. you're so strong, but it's the minute you start talking and, like, <laughs> we really get to talk to you, you're, like, the sweetest person. <laughs> oh, thank you. So I'm just like, but I see it. Because when we first it's met also, like, I was like, oh, my God. I hope she's nice. <laughs> It's That's so down. funny. Oh, I love but, it. But so your dad said, swing on, swing on them mm-hmm. before they swing on you. Literally hit them before they hit you was the motto. So um, I was quite rough around the edges. And the truth is, is I, I like looking back on it now as an adult, um, it was definitely a defense mechanism. Like I had to be on high alert at all times because, again, just growing up where um, in a place where people smile in your face, but like really there's that hate in their heart. Mm. Like I've always mm. said, I would rather you be racist and you know <gasps> that you're racist, right? Rather than you smile in my face. But then when a real situation happens, then I find out Girl. that way. So I'm just like my <gasps> life because my girlfriend and I literally got into it. Mm. We got into a whole oh, no. spat about, do we want a society that is openly racist or, or, covertly racist no, and i was like no. i want to see it i would rather have a society that shows me to my face exactly. what i'm dealing with exactly. rather than me thinking so like it. yeah like, everything's that okay. shit is sweet it's not and i'm going into the inner you know job interviews right. for example thinking you know i'm qualified i'm this i'm that mm-hmm. and they're laughing and smiling in my face oh my god and then they turn around and just Absolutely. No, just, Absolutely. you know, shoo me. Right. And talking bad about me. You know, and you know the saying, do you know why some of these cops can't show up to the KKK rallies to break it up? It's because it's them. Come on. They go home, take off their cop uniforms yeah. and put on the same damn KKK yeah. um, hoodies. Come on. Hoods. <laughs> It's all of You know that. what I'm saying? It's the same people. Exactly. You can't be in two places at one time. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So I'd rather you show me, let me in, your, in your full truth. Wear that damn hoodie. Let me know let me, what Let is. me see what you're about. 100%. But don't put on that cop uniform and pretend to pr- protect and serve me. Who are you protecting and serving? Exactly. Not me. Exactly. Let me see your true colors. You, you want to you wanna, you wanna be cool when it serves your purpose. Right. But secretly and deep down in your heart and again i i like to say because you know when when everything came to surface mm-hmm. right in 2020 mm-hmm. um it's not anything that was new because no. this has been my life mm. period um but it was definitely brought to this to the surface because now everybody's stuck at for home. everyone else right f- exactly i used to say um, there's a difference in being ignorant and not knowing your ignorance, mm-hmm. right? Where that's what your mom's mom's mom grew mm-hmm. up with. And, and so that's just what they passed down. But mm-hmm. but when you actually get into the world, mm-hmm. then you realize not all black people are that way. Not all Hispanic, not all people of color are a specific kind of way mm-hmm. or in this category that people mm-hmm. like to try to put you in. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then your heart changes and you start to change the way that you view things and you view people. And then there's a difference in being ignorant and being comfortable in your ignorance. Mm, Being comfortable being ignorant. Being comfortable in your ignorance where Mm. you know it's not okay, but you Mm. also just really don't care because this is what it is for you. And that's the hate that you have in your heart. Mm. Now there's no, there is no, there is no not knowing. Yes. Do you know what I mean? That all of that was pushed to the side. I feel like, especially this past year. Um, and so now, you know, so if it's there, it's because you want it to be, you're choosing to remain ignorant at this point. And and that's just, if you're not amending how you act or how you operate in the world, how you're being an ally to people, if you're not changing you're choosing to remain the same and exactly. choosing ignorance. Right. Point blank. And here's the thing, back to what we were talking about. I would rather know. Right. So that way I know how to maneuver around that situation right. or around you as a right. human being or person. Um, but also I have, cause I have a son. Mm-hmm. Um, Nico is amazing. Mm-hmm. He's literally lighter than me. But if you ask him like, Hey, Boogs, like what, you know, what's your, what's your color? He yeah. literally says black. Yeah. He will flat out tell I people I'm to black. I to get to that because I'm Girl. like, what, how, to raise a son in this environment, mm. where, like, how? Well, so we. Especially a son of mixed, you know. Yeah. Well, um, so my side of the family is the only family that he knows. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a single mother and mm-hmm. I have been for, you know, as long as I can remember. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Um, so my son does identify with my side of the family, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting because we live in Redondo Beach, which is predominantly a Caucasian area. Mm-hmm. Um, and so his little buddies, looking at it, he has friends from, I think it, it's a little spread out, but mm-hmm. more so it's the brown skin kids that mm-hmm. are his little homies that okay. he just has gravitated right. towards for whatever purpose. Right. Um, and so one of the kids' moms, we were, you know, hanging out. Kids are doing a play date, which I don't know what that was. My parents growing up were like, go outside. You right. know what I mean? So, so the play date. Man, now the play we have play now. dates. <laughs> but um, they Times were that. And so, so me and this other mom is talking, and she's like, man, I'm just so happy that, you know, that we're in Redondo Beach because, like, our boys won't have to go through that. And I looked at her and said, no, no, no. I said, absolutely not. Do you realize that if something did go down, our boys would be the first ones to more than likely get blamed because they're the only ones. Yes. So it's it's easy to point out what sticks out. Right. So don't think just because the area that we're in is safe and and okay. Exactly. That you're... mm -mm. So if anything... Do you know what I mean? More on high alert. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think that's what it, that was just instilled in me. Mm. Um, and so when everything really started to blow up yeah. last year, yeah. um, because now the entire world is looking at everything, yes. I was in such an interesting place to yeah. be in because, again, just with how I grew up, um, the fact that I am, you know, Three different shades of brown girl. Right. I like all the sauces. Right. Um, <laughs> all the sauce. Give it to me. Three different shades of brown. I I was feeling a lot of different ways. Right. And if I'm being honest, and, and again, I know it's not like the popular thing to say, but all I can do is just be completely honest mm-hmm. where, um, you know, I, I completely understand the side of being angry. Yeah. Right. Because that was me for more than half of my life. Um, Mm. But hate is just too heavy for me to carry. Yes. And, um, you know, I just know what I felt like on the inside. And so I heard quite a few people being like, it's not my job to explain it to you, you know, Mm. where I'm coming from and Mm. how I feel. Um, And I kind of took a bit of a different approach, I think, just because... And not everybody will ask you because they genuinely want to know. Right. And so that's where you kind of have to read the room and use wisdom on, like, mm-hmm. you know, who to actually share with and who mm-hmm. not to. Because mm-hmm. I don't believe you have to share with everybody. I don't believe you need to share with everybody. But I think that when there's this genuineness of, I just don't understand because that's never been my reality. Mm-hmm. Um, there's an actual innocence there. Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Then I, I feel like, right. I feel like that there is space to be yes. able to do that because... Yes. You can read about, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. or Rosa Parks in the textbooks. But the truth is, at this particular time, my son was doing his his um, projects on it was Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm doing this project with him and I'm reading, I'm like, wait a second, that's not what happened. Mm -hmm. And and these are in school books, Mm -hmm. mind you. I'm like, that's not the whole story. Oh, no. So so me being me. You know, I got the books. Yeah. Uh, we watched the movies. We okay. did all the ugly stuff, everything, um, for him to realize and see what it really is. So yes. so we can say, well, you need to go do your research, but even right. the research is watered down. You see? And so even if they do that, they're still not getting the full scope of what it is. And honestly, can you really resonate with somebody that you've maybe read about or do you resonate a little bit more on, you know what? I've met Mame and I actually respect her and she carries herself in such a way. Like, I'd actually like to know her story. Mm-hmm. And then it hits you a little mm-hmm. bit differently because now it's somebody that, that you know personally, yes. right? Somebody yes. that you've had a conversation with. Yeah. Um, and again, I haven't always been this way. Like, girl, mm-hmm. I was ready to fight. I was ready to pop off. Like I said, Aki Balboa, that yes. was me. Yes. Let's go. And what changed for me was there was this one lady and I can't remember her name, but, um, she comes up to me at one point and she was like, I'm so sorry. I don't know what my face was saying. Um, but I think that you were drop dead gorgeous. Uh, blah, blah, just all these really kind things. I was like, Okay. Okay, because okay. girl, because I was about to come for you. Right, right. <laughs> I was like, Hi, that's so can funny. I help you? So I'm like, guessing she was staring at you, probably. It was it was interesting, and okay. I it, and I was like, I like that she said that. I like that. 
I don't know what my face was saying, right. but good. Right. Thank you. No, because sometimes I really be like, what the heck are you looking at? Exactly. Stop looking at me. Exactly. And, and I hate to feel, especially in this time, because everyone's such in high alert mm-hmm. and everything, like, I'm just, I don't, listen, I've had, I've had yeah. some weird, um, sorry guys, a little bit off topic, but no, I yeah. had some weird um, instances with, with just weirdos yeah. like a Trader Joe's this man was so rude to me mm-hmm. so rude to me and I literally I had to raise my voice right. and then I look like this angry exactly. black girl here I go exactly. no one comes to my rescue even though this man exactly. literally tried to like bump my cart with his cart mm-hmm. because he said I was cutting when I went to go get water and this was my cart Sir, here's the thing. It's no it, one came to my rescue. It's a it's a line at the grocery store, bruh. Like there's so many other things in the world that we could be worried about. And I'm just like, you really of, are yeah. coming at me right now, exactly. like for for this girl. So many things keep happening. So I'm just yeah. on high alert where I'm just like, Absolutely. I don't want no bullshit from nobody. Exactly. Don't you look at me. Don't you <laughs> like? Don't look at me wrong. If yeah. you speak to me, speak to me nice. Come like, because yeah. I'm just like, check your tone. You know what I mean? Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I hate to feel this way. I hate to feel this yeah. way, but but it's, it's also it's understood because Being, oh. because again, just just the way that things are now. And and it, like I said, I my hometown as an adult, I love going back. The air is just different in Tennessee, mm-hmm. but it was very difficult. Like sitting in my desk and I think it was like geography class or whatever. My hair was all the way down my back. Mm. This girl literally randomly took a pair of scissors and <gasps> cut no. my hair at the nape of my neck. Stop. So I had to dump her out of her desk. That's how girl mad she was that and you t- had long I'm before. telling you. And so it, even like I was saying, my brother and I are two completely different colors. Mm. And so it was random one day. He drops me off in the front. This girl um, in like my English class was like, and I know her name, but I'm not going to do her like that. Um, <laughs> Was literally like, hey, who is that that dropped you off? Um, and I was like, oh, it was my brother. She's like, really? And I was like, no, I'm just messing. And I don't know why I said that, mm-hmm. but I did. And she was like, oh, I didn't think so. What do you mean? Right. Yeah, so when she said so. that, I was like, wait a second, wait a no, second. No, that actually is my brother. Right. And that's what I said. And she was like, you're black, were her exact what? words. And I said, yeah. And she never, mind you, this was our freshman year. She never talked to me again for the rest of high school. Wait, what? This was four years. No, she stayed as far away from me as she what possibly What was her called. race? She was white. Oh, she what? Was very, she was very Caucasian. Oh, no. Yeah. And even, and so, and even on the other side though, right? Because I, like I said, I wasn't black enough for the black kids right. or white enough for the white kids. Right. Um, we had this silly pageant, but it was called Miss Black Shelbyville, right? Mm. And that was because... There were all of these other pageants that mainly the Caucasian girls did. And mm-hmm. you never, like, not even rarely, but you just never saw mm-hmm. girls of color enter these pageants. Right. Um, so there was a couple in our hometown that chose to, you know, start yeah. this pageant for girls of color. Yeah, exactly. And it just so happened to be called Miss Black Shelbyville. Mm-hmm. Um, and so one of the girls in high school came up to me and she was black and mm-hmm. she was like, are you doing a pageant? I was like, nah, cause pageants just weren't my thing. Mm-hmm. Like I was a tomboy. Mm-hmm. Um, and she goes, Oh, I didn't think so. Cause you're not black anyway. <gasps> it's literally so, so Ugh. again, it went both ways. Right. I can't. Um, so of course I did the pageant and yes, I won. <laughs> <laughs> A boop, right? And when my question, black hoop. right? Come Where? on, have you seen my daddy? <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> Come and on. yes, he's the black man with colored eyes. Yes. So, at the end of the day, there was just it was all of that. I can't imagine that experience. It like was, just, oh, it that must be so tough. It was, it was really, but I didn't realize how tough it was because it was just my reality. It was just reality yeah. until after I got out of my hometown Mm. and then you know through modeling and Mm -hmm. stuff like that which um by the grace of god girl is how my modeling career started Mm. um i thought i was gonna be a professional ice skater growing up and girl and um i only had hardwood floors and socks wow never been on the ice a day in my life but i just knew (laughs) i was like wait really (laughs) no girl all i had was hardwood floors and socks but i just knew in my brain i was gonna that's what i'm gonna do right wow so yeah back to your journey yeah like 
Um, Sorry, I know we got way off. (laughs) I mean, no, this is all a part of it. Yeah. But like, how did you become, like, get to LA and start working as a model? Yeah. So, um, man, being in the butt crack of Tennessee, Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) which is where I was, there was a girl in my high school um, when we played on the softball team Mm -hmm. and she wanted to model for whatever reason. She came to me and she's like, hey, um, I'm doing this model search. Uh, I don't want to go by myself. Will you come with me? Mm, okay. And so I was like, I mean, I guess. So I sat in the back, girl, mm. was dirty. I'm pretty positive. I want to say I fell asleep in the back too. Mm. And they woke me up and were like, are you doing this? I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> um, they're like, we really think that you should. Um, we'd love to send you to like Cincinnati or someplace like that. And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, cool. So I get home. I tell my mom, she's so excited. She's like, Oh my goodness, my daughter's going to be a girl. Oh. Cause I was like, I was, that was my whole Filipino accent. Um, <laughs> cause I was such a tomboy. Yeah. So she was so excited. Um, I go to Ohio and honestly, there are these photographers that are doing this like mock shoot. Like an expo. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I got all these callbacks from all these people, but I never Amazing. really went with it. Okay. Right. And then we went with this one cause we didn't know anything about the industry. Mm-hmm. We went with this one little talent, whatever in Kentucky, didn't do anything at all. Um, didn't think anything about it. And about a year later, um, the photographers that were there was like, Hey, we're starting an agency in Nashville. Mm. We remembered you. Mm. We would love for you to come and take pictures or do whatever. Mind you, at this point in time, my parents are like, wow. modeling is a sham. Right. Like, get out of here. Right. These people just want to take your money. Right. And, and so, there were a lot of those. There's so many. So many. Be so many. careful. Yes. If people are asking you for money up front, run. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? But um, so we were just like, ah, we'll see what they're talking about. We went to Nashville, um, took a couple pictures, mm-hmm. and then literally agents were sending agencies were sending contracts. Wow. Yeah, and they were like, uh, this never, never happens. happens. It doesn't oh, happen what? like that. Normally they'll have you fly out. They want to see you. Wow. Um, and also they just started it, and mm-hmm. I was literally their first batch of girls. Wow. Um, shout out, I model management in yes. Nashville. I don't know about all of the other ones. They're definitely legit. Okay. Um, but I was. First batch of girls, I had no clue what they were doing at the time. time? 15. Wow. Yeah, girl. (laughs) A long time. I have been in this, yeah, in the industry for a long time. OG, OG. (laughs) Honestly. Yeah. And so from there, I actually moved to Miami. Okay. Was like, girl, I graduated on a Saturday. I left that Sunday. I was gone. Really? (laughs) Like, no more of Shovel, Tennessee. Oh, my God. And so, um, but. But mind you, my first job was maybe a couple weeks later. Um, decided wow. to sign with uh, with a big agency mm-hmm. in Miami, mm-hmm. um, and then they're like, "Okay, cool. We booked you on." It was either Coles or Target. I want to say it was Coles mm-hmm. was my first job, mm-hmm. and I was like, "I don't even know what I'm doing." Right? Like, you know what I mean? I, There's no training, no nothing. Noth- like, nothing. Yeah, they just throw you in the ringer. Nothing. Mm-hmm. And my first job just so happened to be at a Dave and Buster's. Mm. And I was like, okay, my daddy flew out with me. Oh. Um, it was in Miami. And so I'm like, I'm so nervous, like literally sweating through their clothes because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh like they expect God. a model and right. I'm just like, I have no I'm clue. And so I'm like, okay, so what are we doing? They're like, okay, yeah, just play. I was like, wait a second, what okay. happened? Right? And they're like, yeah, just play ski ball, just shoot the basketball. And I was like, yo, I could do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, all I have to do is, like, you know, is play games and they're going to take yes. pictures. Hell yeah. And so, um, praise God, that was my first job. Because if it would have been in the studio or something, I would have quit a long time ago. <laughs> oh, my God. Like a high pressure situation. Girl, it was crazy. And so, it's just been nonstop since then. That's insane. Because yeah. I was talking to my, um, you know, Sharina. Yeah. And she, sure. her first job was freaking like Vogue Italia. I'd be like, uh, girl, I'm a child. Nice. I don't know if I, that could have been my first job. Yeah. I'd be like, come on. I don't even know if that could be my first job now, to be honest. <laughs> like, there's so much I good for her. What? Listen, it's different, yeah, but that's not me. We country over here. My first job was Coles. I love it. <laughs> Listen, and that's one thing they I'm learning the bills, is girl. they were paying. Come on. Because I, I had a late start. I started at like, professionally where I finally got signed mm-hmm. at 23. Oh yeah. yeah so, yeah. and what, that wasn't that long ago. Yeah. So it's just like, um, damn, it has been long. Girl, I'm telling you though. <laughs> now here's the thing. The industry was so different back then. So different. The rate, the rates the were rates different were back different. then. The way that clients were, were mm-hmm. different. The travel was different. Mm-hmm. Like 
I'm so blessed coming from my little podunk town, yes. right, that I was in. I remember getting to Miami and being like, there are people in the world like me. Wow. Like, I didn't yep. know brown skin. It was either you're right. black or you're white. Right. We had the occasional Hispanic. Right. Um, but there were brown skin from all from Brazil right. from literally mm, just all just over a mix of everything just kind of open your eyes it, to I was like oh my goodness so mm. I got to travel the world mm. for free on mm. somebody else's dime mm. I got to you know do do a lot in life that most people don't get to do yeah yeah um and see a lot that a lot of people don't get yeah. to do so I'm extremely blessed and that's beautiful yeah in that sense mm. but even that though, that came with its own uh, set of trials. Girl, I'm telling you, because yeah. to be that young, coming from such a tiny little town, not knowing it, thank God that um, my brother went with me to right. a job. And so they're like, do you move here? He's like, no, but they signed him as well. So oh, then my brother got to move out with me, that's which was so amazing. perfect. What? Because oh, Lord huge. knows, girl. But, um, so yeah, so I got to Miami and when I got out there, Mm -hmm. um, I had an agent actually tell me like, I mean, I'm doing a lot, making a lot of money Mm -hmm. at 18 years old. Young. Um, and like, I remember this agent telling me, he was like, you know, you've got some cellulite, like uh, you could lose 10 pounds. Mm. I'm from this time. I didn't even know what cellulite was. Girl, I'm literally like. We don't think about that. I had no idea and even when he said it I still had no clue what in the world he was talking mm-hmm. about all I knew is you need to lose weight wow. and so that just kept playing over and over and in my brain I'm like oh shucks I'm gonna lose jobs I'm not gonna get booked I'm da 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 I need to lose weight and I couldn't figure it out because he he mentioned you need to run girl I don't run anywhere okay <laughs> I will walk fast for you all day long I ain't running for nobody I ain't running for nobody okay, okay. my daddy was a track coach and that was the one thing I was like no nah, I'm not doing that um, and so, uh, literally, I, I meet, meet this girl, and she's like, oh, yeah, cocaine will help you to lose weight. And I'm like, okay, cool. The curb the appetite. Right. Lord and no. I'm just like, okay, again, I'm from this tiny little town. Right, like, I've right. never smoked. I've never drank. Um, I've never done any of that stuff. And so... Just I, not knowing. I didn't know. Not yeah, knowing. I had no idea. So I was like, cool. Watched a movie where I think they did something with their like fingernail or whatever they mm-hmm. case it like so that was my experience mm-hmm. and then I realized that from there I had de- developed something else mm-hmm. right there was all these insecurities and all these other things because I again I, d- I didn't know mm-hmm. um and it turned into now me doing this wasn't even about losing weight mm-hmm. it was about it was my little secret mm-hmm. because my life is planned out for me months in advance mm-hmm. do you know what I mean yeah, in the modeling yeah. industry it's like yeah. you're booked this day this day this day this yeah. day they just tell you where to go and you're supposed to show, show up. up and so I missed you know barbecues I missed you know time with friends I missed yeah. all this stuff because mm-hmm. I was always working mm-hmm. so then I was like okay I can this is what I can control this mm-hmm. is my little secret mm-hmm. and so um not knowing what in the world I was doing um ended up going from like a little bit to like a lot of it mm-hmm. I think right mm-hmm. and um developed an eating disorder yeah. as well oh, no. so girl I'm 510 yeah right yeah. and um I think at my lowest I was 117 pounds what like <laughs> wow where <laughs> wow. yeah but that was the thing even if no I'd like to say nobody knew yeah but, but they looking back, right? But but they no one said to, anything. Right? No. But nobody said anything because you're their cash cow. You're making that, the money. That part. So why would I? You know, whether yeah. it's a drug problem, whether it's a right. eating problem, right. whether it's depression, mental health issues, mm-hmm. a lot of these um, agencies are very predatory in the way that they handle their girls. Right. They don't care about our well-being here's the thing maybe now just because so things are changing yes i I feel like to a certain degree they're changing or at least they're trying to to give the facade as though it's completely changing it's not and that's just the truth right but um but especially back then it was just a time where you don't talk about it. Right. You, you just don't I mean? talk about it. You those just things. don't talk about it, right? And so if if you're if you're going through it, okay, I might see it, but you know right. what? She's still making us money. She's still so making we're just us gonna money. keep on. And you know, agents like and, and that's why when, once I finally found 
uh, a great agency for me in mm-hmm. in LA. Mm-hmm. And shout out to Mana. Oh my and gosh, Anahi. Yes, you know, love, love because. Love. I didn't know that you could have such a great relationship with agents. Right. Before that, I thought it was just, okay, just show up. All right, cool. Here's okay, the thing. Be, and I was looked, scared to say anything to anybody. I'm telling you, Ma, Mana is the first agent, agent I think. Uh, there was also one other, Grace, but Mana for sure is an agent where I, I was like, oh my goodness, she sees me as a person yes. and not dollar signs. Yes, I think exactly. I told you that too yes. Um, yes. in the beginning. I was like, she's just so incredible. So incredible. She actually reaches out. She's like, hey, let's go to lunch. Or hey, how's Nico like doing? Like a human. Uh, exactly. And I'm just like, oh my God, I love you. And I'm like, I literally tell her, I love yeah. you. Yes. Thank you. And I'm Absolutely. like, I never had that love relationship her. in the past with other agents. It's so I, I was almost weirded out. Like, is this? So I'm like, it's yeah, important. it's it's really important for our well being that that the industry treat us like human beings right. because we are, right. and you know talk to us yeah. as such and treat us as such because when you have a fourteen year old girl literally with an eating Come disorder mm-hmm. or developing a drug problem or has all these right. you know different mental health problems and you're not even caring enough to ask her how she's doing, yeah, yeah, that is so just disgusting, yeah. like. That is so predatory, and I really hope we can do something different about that. Like, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. I think that's the reason why um, I do feel like, because there have been so many times I'm like, okay, I'm definitely done with the industry. Like, right, right. We uh, all have those girl, moments. Like, we're, we're done. But I'm I, done. I believe that a part of the reason why, like, we are still here, yeah. o- OGs, mm-hmm. a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. older, mm-hmm. Um, have lived some life, is because I didn't really have that guidance. Yeah, You know what I mean? When, yeah. I, when I was in the industry and and back then and just coming into it. But I do feel like the Lord has kind of kept pulling me back and kind of kept me in to be able to help those behind me along the way. Cause honestly, all the girls that I'm on jobs with are all like early twenties. I'm like, Oh, sweet child. I I know. (laughs) know know. I'm like, sweet baby girl. (laughs) I love them so much, but, but I do feel the need to make sure that I am um, completely honest and very transparent um, because I didn't have somebody help me along my way. So I definitely hit my own rock bottoms, like I said. And even with me sharing about um, my drug problem, right? Because that's what it was. It was Mm -hmm. a drug issue. It was Mm -hmm. addiction. Um, Most people don't even know that about Mm -hmm. me. So mind you, unless like you've actually had just a sit down conversation with me one-on-one, but now we're having a sit down conversation and so many other people just so happen to get to be on it too. Um, be in on it too but but yeah so that was even up until now has been you know something that if you went to my friends in Miami they'd be like wait you were you were doing drugs right because that just in their brain I was like oh Miss Tennessee right sweet Aki and so the one that always was strong and had it together and so it's so important to even with those strong friends right check up on them seriously like really yeah like for real for real so that was me hitting my rock bottom Mm. my rock bottom was I thought that I was about to overdose wow on cocaine I was like and I remember the thoughts going through my brain I'm in this two-story condo that's Mm -hmm. mine I've never had to live in a a model's apartment I've never had to do like any of that I've been blessed enough to financially be able to do it and it was all through modeling nobody gave me anything nobody Mm -hmm. did anything for me Mm -hmm. um and as a matter of fact, I know what it's like to not have much of anything. Right. Like where I grew up in Tennessee was like, we were right across the street from the projects. We lived in a duplex mm-hmm. across the street from the projects. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then my grandma helped my parents mm-hmm. buy a tiny little like 900 square foot house wow. on about an acre. Wow. Um, and that's where we grew up. So this perception of, oh, she thinks she's cute or, oh, she probably came from, she mm-hmm, had, mm-hmm. like, I know what it's, it's like, no. to not have right. anything at all. And right. so, um, working hard and, and people like to say, well, modeling is not a real job. Mm-hmm. I pay real taxes. Okay. <laughs> like, it's not a joke. Listen. And it's not as easy as it's people think not it easy. is. We wake up every day. Absolutely. And like, I, I told you before we started, um, this episode, like I literally almost passed out yeah. this morning. Um, I was working till 10 30 mm. on Monday. Mm. I worked till 10 30. I woke up right. um 7 a.m., went to work on set, was shooting till 10 30, got home and you know, ate something little and went to sleep. And I had an, a job the next day. Oh girl. And so um I was on my feet again. 
didn't eat the best foods on set mm-hmm. and then you know like came home I was exhausted and woke up this morning didn't really eat much yeah. because uh, like I'm running around trying to do this trying to do this mm-hmm. trying to do that and like you almost forget yeah. to take care of yourself yeah and so nah this shit is not glamorous it's not it's easy not. for anyone that thinks like oh you get to sit yeah I'll I'll take a um you know you'll see me post when I'm in the chair maybe getting my makeup done and getting my hair done mm-hmm. that maybe is glamorous <laughs> even that is like when you've done that 20 times Girl, it's not that glamorous it's not it's really you not. know they're touching your face kind of invasive especially now yeah you know and and like yeah, don't get it twisted. This this is not an easy um, life. It's not an easy job by right. any means. I'm on my feet all day. All day long. You're at least, like, if you have a corporate job, maybe you're sitting down, you're getting to work from home. Mm-hmm. I don't have the luxury of working from home. Yeah. Not not yeah. so much. Some people are sending a lot more work to girls who have the means and the, the space to do work but, at home. But mind you, but we can't. But all mind the you, time. even even with that, to be honest with you, even if you think about that, it's like now, whereas in before our job was to model. Right. But again, the industry is changing so much so and I'm much. so extremely blessed on on the clients that do um, still book us yes. and, and who um, are able to send us the stuff. But even then it's like we have to be the art director. We have to be the photographer. We, ha- we have to make sure you that have to we- wear all those hats. Right. And I'm wearing those hats, period. Right. <laughs> Especially the makeup and hair hairstyles because as a black model, I'm going on set and I have my hair kit. I have my makeup. I'm ready for whatever mm. because I have sat on in too many chairs where Girl, I'm not being catered let's for. Let's talk about and it. And they do not know how to do squats. Let's talk about it. And that's it. another big piece of the advocacy work that I'm doing now because I'm like, I'm tired of still Mm, mm -hmm. 2021 still sitting in chairs where they don't know how to do my face yeah and you know luckily some makeup brands are expanding their you know their (laughs) ranges to have more shades their palettes to have more shades wow let's you know first of all y'all didn't know we existed well i I really do I, i would love to talk about that because i remember when you sent me you text messaged me like the um the um the survey Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I remember where I was and I remember what I was doing and I literally like tears started falling down my face Mm -hmm. I may even tear up right now backstory I sent a survey um for this initiative called the black beauty roster Mm -hmm. that I'm lead counsel on where we're basically fighting for uh, models rights and creative talents rights um in the beauty industry Mm -hmm. and fashion industry because like I said we're not being accommodated for or not. cared about, period. Not. And the the problem is clearly systematic racism in our industry mm-hmm. where we're not even being thought about. And so people aren't showing to work prepared to t- take care of my specific needs. Right. But my white counterpart, she's good. She's sitting in the chair and she's getting her hair and makeup done. And, and she fine. looks beautiful. But yet you are expected to either come already done, right? Or you're over here looking like ghost face killer. There have been so many times, girl. Killer. I'm serious. Yes. There have been so many times where even, I mean, clearly there's a huge difference between your skin tone and my skin mm-hmm. tone. Mm-hmm. There have been so many times when even on my skin tone, yeah. the makeup is way too light. They don't even have my shade. And I honestly, I don't feel pretty. And the truth no, yeah. is, and if you don't feel good, how can okay, you feel work good. well? Exactly. And so there have been more than a handful of times where I just won't even look at myself throughout the day if it is the case, yeah. because it affects how I perform. Yes. It, it, it really, it really do- does. It affects everything. It really does. And then, and then they'll go so far as to be like, something is wrong. Something is off and make you almost feel like you're the and issue then, and that exactly. you're not performing. And then they put it on us. Right. We're the, to the point where, like you were about to say about the survey, I sent out a survey mm-hmm. to some of my, um, you know, closest friends and, and just, and, all models and and actresses that I knew that Mm -hmm. were in the industry of color and black Mm -hmm. um, to just kind of like talk about their experiences and the responses were overwhelming to the point where like people were having to apologize for (laughs) like what? So I'm basically having to apologize for showing up to set black. Right. 
because you didn't have what you needed to do your job on me. Right. And now I'm apologizing to you. Yeah. And it's just like, no, why are you apologizing? Right. Don't apologize. I mean, and here's the thing, and it's not even just like tiny little things. It could, it, it could have been stuff like Target in-store graphic stuff, but now, which, which means the big posters that you mm-hmm. see right in the stores. Mm-hmm. So now it's like every time I have to go into, and it's not necessarily Target. I'm mm-hmm. just throwing that out there, right? <laughs> um, I love you. Target. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, they book me. I love them so much. They're just great. Throwing it. I love you. I love Target. You, Target. <laughs> um, hey, I'm keeping it real. I love them so That's much. So like funny. they're they're great. They're, but great they're clients. some of these other clients, yeah. right? And they're in-store graphics. And so it's like, okay, cool. So now there's a huge poster of me looking crazy. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. up, which again, granted, yes, we're so blessed in what it is that we get to do, regardless, sure. we got paid. For sure. But the principle of it is, is that it should never be that. Do you should know what I mean? There that. should never be just the Victoria's Secret hair on one particular person. Mm-hmm. Whereas in, I have to sit here looking like who shot John. Do you know what I mean? Listen. And like, oh, well, we can't really, even even my hair, it's like, oh, we can't really manage that. Let's just like put it up in a, in a no, fun thing. No, we yeah. can't manage that. Then hire someone who can manage it. Then why are you here? Why are you doing my right. hair? My hair is not to be managed. Right. Do right. my hair I'm like you did you. old Becky here. Come, it, exactly. You feel me? Exactly. And like the problem runs so deep. And honestly, I think I'm going to have to do a separate episode literally just tackling that that issue because it, yes, it's please. so deep. I've written a uh, medium on uh, an article on medium.com mm-hmm. where I did a call out to the industry. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, I am tired yeah, come of on. still talking come about on. this. Like even what are we going to do to resolve this issue even- of not professionals, clearly not being professional enough to, even know how to do their own jobs where I'm sitting down. Like that's in the what chair. you're hired for, right? That's what hair you're and hired makeup. for. Okay. I'm just making sure. But I come <laughs> to set and I'm doing my own hair uh, and makeup. Yeah. And please, for the people who still, you know, want to always, you know, downplay model and, and mm-hmm. our work, just know, understand when you go to work, like your race is, I, I would hope anyway, your mm-hmm. race is hopefully not, a reason that you can't do your job right. better, right. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I would hope not anyway. Right. And for me as a black model, showing up to set, that might affect the way I perform that day and exactly. that might affect if I'm booked again. Exactly. And that affects it's my that livelihood part. and how that I'm going to make money. That part. Do you understand? How so I it's feed a trip. my son. Thank how, you. I, how I'm able to like Thank actually you. pay just- rent. So part. it's a trickle effect. So don't minimize it to think like, oh, they're complaining about hair and makeup. Right. It's so much bigger than that. Yes. This is clearly an issue of systemic racism in the industry that begins with this surface right. thing. Right. Well, it, it's it's because again, even my hair is curly, but it's it's very. Um, <laughs> I like to say it's more on the Caucasian side. Right? <laughs> it's, it's you know what I mean, but but it, loose it's, curls, right? Exactly. Um, but even with that, like I have to ask, mm-hmm. do you want me curly or straight? Right. Because it's two different processes. Right. It's two different products. It's two different, completely different Period. things. Period. Um, and even then it's like, oh no, well, we can just do this. And then it, it just. And I'm like, listen, no, 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 I'm telling you because I know my hair. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to help you so out. So how do you want me to, and mind you, we're already doing the work. We're the ones that, but I'm not getting paid to be a hairstylist. I'm not getting paid. The <laughs> and I'm trying to help there. you out because if you want my hair straight, I'll be damned if I show up curly and, and you're like, and look crazy. We want to go straight. Right. But then, but then have us looking crazy and then us looking no. like we're the issue and the problem. And then, then I need my three hours because I need my hair to um, condition. Right. Yeah. I it's need just, to detangle it. It's a different it. process. It's just a different process. Yeah. It's, it's a completely different process. And it's so, a deep and, and issue. even so, so. When, again, when the industry started to change, right, with everything that was happening in 2020. Big quotation marks. I, huge quotation mm-hmm. marks. Because I, I could scroll through my DMs and count how many clients, how many um, different brands reached out to me to say, oh, my gosh, we love your look. We think that you would be perfect. And I'm like, okay, cool. So first off, I do have an agent mm-hmm. for that, right? But then I would I, I would always make it a point to go to the page to see if it if the brand fits me. If it yeah. doesn't fit, I'm not one of those people. I'll take 
anything right, and everything. Just anything. Okay, good. Um, I'm very, you know, I stand Selective. for what I stand for. Good. And, um, you know, a job is a job, yes, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to sell my soul Amen. to do anything Amen. at all whatsoever. Um, so I would go to these brands and I'm realizing like, Oh, you ain't got nobody on here of any kind of color. Mm. So now it's, so what you're trying to do, it's not that I fit the brand. Mm -hmm. It's that, you know, you're going to get caught and what you're doing. So you don't, I'm, I'm the other, Mm. right? So there's always the, what race are you? Black, white, other, Hispanic. The racial ambiguity. That part. So I would always. They love some racial ambiguity. uh, Growing up, I was the other. I would always put other, Mm -hmm. right? Because it's too many things. Mm. So that's what would happen. I'm like, oh, you guys don't want to go all the way to the right and booking an African-American woman or a black woman or whatever. Like a a brown skin. Literal brown skin. African-American woman. And I'm the one that's like, "Mm, she could be mm, right you know what i mean and so so i was the scapegoat for them Mm. and when i tell you there are definitely things i i I turned down things i did and it's money yes but the principle of it was is that you are not going to use me and i'm not going to be used for gain for Mm. you Mm -hmm. so that way you can stay out of the media you can not be dragged because everybody was getting at that point in time and they should have yes right but um but that was a lot of that was happening. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, again, just during that time, I felt so many different emotions because it, it was my real life yes. and it has been my real life yes. forever. But then also being in this position of, um, I had a lot of people with what happened with my brother and mm-hmm. everything else like that. Mm-hmm. Um, who were like, why aren't you speaking up so mm-hmm. much more? Like, why aren't you talking? Why aren't you there? Why aren't you in the front lines? And, I was torn, right? Mm. Because, um, and this may be like all the way to the right. I'm not sure, but no, please. Um, I was torn because, you know, again, this was my reality. Yeah. But I also there was something that you had posted, and it spoke straight to my soul. And it was about how not everybody's, um, not everybody has the same calling or the mm-hmm. same, um, mm-hmm. you know, response to what's happening. Mm-hmm. Some people are called to pray. Some mm-hmm. people are called to be on the front line. Some yes, people are called to, and so, and when I, I remember seeing that and just like, I bawled oh. because, um, as much as I am so bold in my faith and so bold in so many things, there are some things that I feel like, you know, if you're trying to fight every single battle, then you don't have the strength to fight the battles that you're purpose mm. to actually fight mm. right Chills. yes and so when you post it I'm like I'm a prayer warrior that's what I do I right mm. but um I also wanted to be able to do something because that was my life and that was and I wanted to yeah. so bad but I just yeah. felt like what can I do if I'm on the front lines if I get shot in the face with a rubber bullet I'm a single mother yes you know what I yes. mean like nobody's here to take care of my that son part. exactly and so I have to move in wisdom yes with what and but I was getting a lot of people like, where are you at on the da 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 da? You no, know what you I mean? fight how to... you can fight. Exactly. You, everyone has a role. Everyone Absolutely. has a different role. And it role. all matters. And it all matters. It's not the same. We need the writers. We need the that activists part. on the front line. We need the ones who use their bodies to protest. Right. We need the the singers. We need the artists right. who will paint the murals and, 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 you know, yeah. give a different light to what's mm-hmm. happening. We need every single role because, and it all matters and it paints a time. It yeah. paints a picture of the times, but yes, someone that has a son, mm-hmm. no, you don't need to be right. on the front line using your body right. Right. to fight or to prove a message. Not in that way. Right. You know, you yeah. can use your voice. You can use your prayers, Absolutely. your energy in Absolutely. different ways. All of it So matters. completely, yeah. All of it matters. I always say, again, there's so many things that so many people want you to do. Mm-hmm. But, um, y- you know, I am a woman of faith. Yes. You know, I don't make a move unless the Lord tells me to make a move, right? And so it was, it was, this one was difficult because mm-hmm. I wanted to make so many moves and I wanted to, to share so many things and say so many things. And, but again, I just felt like the Lord was like, mm, like, are we freestyling or what are, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, do you, do you need my help or do you not need my help? Right. And so I think that just, we are definitely in a time where everybody likes to share everything. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. but I'm also one of those overshare, overshare, but I'm one of those people where, um, I get people all the time that are like, 
you are so full of wisdom. You have all this stuff to say. I'm like, well, that's because I've really been through some, girl, mm. my life has been a lifetime movie, right? right? right. <laughs> so um, I've been through some things, but I like to sit back in things mm-hmm. um, and really feel it and really dissect it for myself yes. um, because it's already hard yeah. figuring out, okay, is this me? Is this God? Is this the enemy? Like who, right. who is what? Right. Let alone get the opinion of thousands of other people or, you know, family, this, that, and the other. Um, so I like to try to decipher what's, you know, for you. what is, yeah. What, what is it without having the clutter of all the other voices in my head? And when I choose to actually, when you know about it, more than likely it's because I've taken that, the steps in the process to like, I know that this is what I'm rooted in mm-hmm. and this is the conclusion that I've come to. So this is just what I know through my own, you know, yes. like whether it be anything, forgiveness, whether it be like just, honestly just anything in life. Mm-hmm. But I always say like we can't mask anything. You, you have to take the masks off. When you take the mask off, you're able to see what it really is. Mm -hmm. And then you can choose to address it or not address it. Why did you feel like people were um, wanting you to speak about what was happening? Um, So uh, my brother, like we we briefly discussed my brother, um, who was darker in skin, um, skin tone. And um, so he was in the military and, you know, he, he went, he served in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Um, That's why I have such a special place in my heart for the military. Yeah. Your dad Um, was, my my dad was air force. My brother was army. Like my whole, I have cousins in the Navy. Like, so we are definitely a military Military family. family. Um, And yeah, so he, he gets back from Afghanistan and stuff. Um, And he's stationed in Louisiana and he, he was, his life was taken in Louisiana. And so, um, so yeah. And so, um, and there were so many things that went, you know, through my head at Mm -hmm. that point in time. I'm like, okay, well, why was he the dark skinned one? How come it couldn't have been me? Like Mm -hmm. if he had lighter skin or, you know, lighter eyes, then he wouldn't have, you know, maybe he wouldn't have been seen. There's so many different things that you think, right? Why was it a white, was it racially motivated? Mm -hmm. What happened? Yeah. Yeah. And so, no way. And so, yeah, it, it, so there's just so many, so many things, yeah, <laughs> do you know yeah, what I mean? That kind of just like, that run through your mind. And then there are people who feel like they know you enough to tell you what you should and shouldn't no, be doing. never, never. Um, and so with, with, I remember just having the conversation with my, my daddy and he's like, girly, yeah. before you're anything else, yeah. you're a child of God. Amen. And so that's where you sit in and what he's telling you to do, then that's what you do. Amen. And that's all I needed to hear. Right. That's all you, know? you need to do. So, cause, cause even so it was like. I remember growing up and being like, I'm the one, I'm definitely going to die when I'm young because I was like the one that was always pushing it. Like I jump out of airplanes, like I'm skydiving, I'm jumping off cliffs, girl, I will do all of it and Mm -hmm. I love it all. Um, But, but it was my brother, like he was the one that passed and Mm -hmm. he was the golden child. And Mm so I'm extremely careful now with, with what I speak about, what I say, um, even just about myself, about my life, because it all matters. It does. It, it does. all matters. What so. we speak is energy, absolutely. and energy turns into matter. Yeah. It really does matter. Uh, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And I'm just like, my heart just goes out to you. Like like you said, Thank this you. is our real life. Yeah, exactly. This is not a game. This is not a concept. Right. This is not... <laughs> something that we talk about or, or let's talk about the difficult, let's have these difficult conversations. Right. No, this is an actual thing that we deal with on a daily, mm-hmm. how we operate in this world. You know what I mean? I have to think about my blackness when I walk out Absolutely. of my apartment. And um, I'm just, it's exhausting. It's beautiful. I love being black. I love my 100%. culture. I yes. love everything that comes with it. Like, oh. I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine being white, but I also <laughs> grew up in Europe and right. was the only black person and thought like, oh, I'm, I wish I was white. Mm-hmm. Like, Absolutely. you know what I mean? I thought, I, I thought being black was not it because that's how I was made to feel. Mm-hmm. Everything around me was making me feel that I was lesser than yeah. or other, I was othered right. in so many ways right. at, before the age of 10. 
you're being othered. Right. Can you imagine? Yeah. I don't think you can if you're not black. And you can empathize all you want. And I appreciate yeah. those of you who really do take the time to empathize and really want to be real yeah. allies. But you will never understand. Mm-hmm. Fully understand. That, 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 that mode of operation in the world and that pain that comes with it. Yeah. And someone on Instagram was like, I love being black. It's a little dangerous, but it's lit. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? That's it. That part. That's it. It's that a little part. dangerous, but it's lit. You know, I, I, I think about it and I, and, and this is even just in the recent months, um, I've thought about, man, all of the things that had to happen. Cause there are times when it's like, do I actually have a purpose? Like yes. what, what am I here for? Am I supposed to be here? Am I, you know, and, and again, sitting in those feelings yes. and just being real about it. Yes. Right. Cause you can't just be happy and like rainbows and all butterflies the all the time. No. And I think people genuinely think that that's how I am. Cause mm. I'm like 95% of the time, you know, Amen. and you choose to be that way. I have to be, you choose it is to. genuinely a choice. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, because we could all sit here and wallow every day about our problems. Uh, exactly. Because there are a lot of them. There are. They're yeah. really genuinely I'm like, how am I going to pay my mortgage? How is this going to happen? How is that going to happen? Like just yesterday, I've been going through this license thing. And um, a girlfriend of mine was like, oh, no. Like, oh, it's, you know, the worry. And, the, and I was like, worry? Who is she? I don't know her. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Who is that Who girl? is that? I don't know who that is. Because mm-hmm. I just, I refuse to do it. Amen. Like, I think I've spent so many years of my life being like having this heaviness yes. of all of that on me that you know through the grace of God honestly mm. um and it is just by and through him alone that mm. I'm able to know who I am and who mm. I'm rooted in and mm. what I'm rooted in mm. um that I can live life knowing that um, he's got me amen no matter no matter what happens right amen. but I was sitting in these feelings of do I even have a purpose like what is this? And um, I specifically went to think about how I was even born or how I even came to be. Like you mm-hmm. asked me earlier, how did your parents even meet, right? Mm-hmm. My daddy's from the butt crack of Tennessee. Mm-hmm. My mom is Filipino Hawaiian, but grew mm-hmm. up in. And so I'm like, okay, my daddy's African American mm-hmm. with descendants from Cameroon, Africa, but mm-hmm. he grew up in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. My mother is Filipina and Hawaiian, right? Mm-hmm. Raised in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Everything that it took for them to meet each other when they met each other. And mind you, mm-hmm. so my dad and my mom, they got together in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. But in order to bring someone back, they had to be married. My mm-hmm. daddy was not ready for that. Mm-hmm. So he went back to the United States of America. But my mom was pregnant and didn't know it. <gasps> wow. So he literally went back home. Right. And my mom's pregnant. She has her whole pregnancy. She actually has my brother by herself oh with her God. family. Wow. Um, I'm still not 100 percent sure on how he found out randomly that like she had. Especially um, like in those times. I'm telling like, you. Right. Because it wasn't like pick up your cell phone right. and call. And so the way my mom says it, she's like, and then he just showed up one day and looked at RJ and was like, that's, that's my, my kid. And married her something and in him must have them. known well and here's the thing but i think about it's it god. it's god it's and god and i think about it and i'm like because he could have been like all the other men who who just didn't worry about yeah. it because yeah. like out of sight out of mind yeah but he chose to, to come back. back and he chose to do what he did yes. and because he made that choice like he was stationed in turkey my mom conceived like here i am but all of came. the little things that had to happen, right, in, in order, order for me for to, to be, be here. here. Yes. And then you think about it and you break it down even further. Um, there was a pastor, a mentor, an old mentor of mine that said, Aki, like, you realize every freckle on your face, mm. the way your hair is, like, your build, how down to, like, how tall you actually are. Because mm-hmm. in the modeling industry, right, like, mm-hmm. if you're a certain height, then uh, more mm-hmm. than likely it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, down to your height, to everything, mm-hmm. is God created you the exact way you needed to be mm. to touch the people that you need to touch, mm. to get into the doors you need to get into, um, to reach the people that God needs you specifically to reach in order to do his will in this earth. 
And so when you break it down like that, it's like, yes, maybe I'm not meant to be famous or on TV or be, but you are purposed to do something very specific in this earth for the people that he needs you to touch. And so instead of, because right now I I feel like we're in this generation where everybody wants to be famous and everybody wants to do all these things. And the truth is, is that, man, you are right where you're at because there's an extension, right? Like I can't hug the whole world, but I can grab you and hold your hand right here and and we can have an effect on each other. And then it's not just me affecting you, then possibly you take something from me or I take something from you and then we share that and then it's a trickle effect, right? And so when you think of it that way, and I, I had to, I was like, absolutely I'm supposed to be here at this particular time for this particular group of humans and and you kind of live life in a different kind of way instead of not good enough not this enough not that enough you know so I love that so much oh it's it ah so good Aki you hurt so good you really touched me (laughs) seriously (laughs) have touched me that was I just want to reach over and give you a hug (laughs) but we have mics in between us <laughs> oh that was so beautiful and so real absolutely that really touched my heart I'm just like ugh, there's nothing more to say my heart thank you no thank you so I much adore you. because you you need we need to hear this sometimes absolutely we need to hear this sometimes the, the world will make you feel like you're not doing enough. It's an ugly you're not place. here. You're, you're not, yeah. you know. Oh, you're not seen. You're not, you're not being enough. Seen. You're not, if you were more this or less that or X, Y, and Z. Everybody. You know. And we're all dealing with it. You know, everyone that we think yeah. is perfect, that we want to be more like them, mm. they're dealing with their own sets of Absolutely. problems. No one is perfect. No one is not going through something. And sometimes just remembering that, what yeah. you said about. God put you in your circumstance, yeah. in your life, yeah. with whatever you have, your talents, your your height, every freckle on your face, the hair on your head, the color eyes you have, yeah. the way your finger bends. Yeah, all of it. Every single thing that makes you you was for a reason. For a purpose. It was Excuse for a purpose. Excuse that thing. <laughs> it was for a reason, for a purpose. Yeah. And if you only touch two people in this world Mm -hmm. you would have you would have served your purpose in this life you you, would have fulfilled your purpose you may see it but then again you also may not but just because you being you or you having the conversation that you have you might somebody might have picked up on on that conversation and then how do you not know that that person isn't some famous writer or some whatever they can whatever it is that that needs to be given from you in this earth will will be given, but you have to be able to operate in that. Mm. And there's this whole facade of, right, we're finding out now that, like, celebrities don't even look like celebrities. Like, Mm. we're all trying to look like so-and-so, and and she don't even look like her. Do you know what I mean? And so that's a thing. If we were all supposed to look the same, we would have been created the same. Exactly. And we're not supposed to. Mm. And so when you can live in that place and in Mm. that space and operate um, from the place of just, this is who I am, and it's going to be ugly because we all have a past, mm-hmm. right? None of us are perfect. We get that all the time. Like, you're so perfect. No, I am I will be the first to tell to you. To let you know I'm not. Yes, I will be the first to tell you um, that I'm absolutely not. Like, when I tell you I had a stank attitude, I was not a cute person at all <laughs> whatsoever on the inside, regardless of what the outside looks like. And we discussed this earlier. We work with some of the most gorgeous human beings from physically. Outside right in the world but then you get to the end and I was like oh you ugly you know what I mean like you could be gorgeous but if you're ugly on the inside you're ugly and that's just what it is um but just know that like you have to be able to I think sit with yourself yes and understand and realize like okay not to pretend as though this isn't my like okay well I'm not really going through that and you can kind of just you know, sweep it under the right, rug, right. but actually sit in it, face it, deal with it. And then just sit in your, that's how you learn right. and that's how you grow. Right. And that's how sometimes the things that we go through aren't necessarily for us to go through them, but mm. for us to, or for us to just mm. have that, but Not for us, but, but they're for, for other people yes. and for us to be able to share. Cause yes. truth be told, like, yes, the modeling industry, yada, yada, I've been blessed enough to, to only um, have to do this for, mm 
my entire life. Mm-hmm. Such a blessing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. If you're like, wow, you've got it made. Well, there was a time when I was pregnant with my son, and mm-hmm. this is speaking of faith. Yeah. Um, there's a saying in Tennessee where we're, you know, you're barefoot and pregnant, right? Mm-hmm. Which is, it was my reality. Wow. So here I am, I'm sitting here and I remember where I was on the toilet girl and I was like, oh, okay, I need to go back to California to get my stuff. Um, so I'm checking my bank account. Girl, I said I had a hundred dollars in the bank. I was like, literally like, what is happening? Where's mm-hmm. my money? Like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. Um, call the bank holds leans all this stuff my sweet oh my, my sweet God. tax lady in tennessee had no clue what she was doing when oh, she was doing my taxes my so Jesus i got Christ. i got audited and so the government took everything no girl way. every oh single my God. dime i had a hundred dollars in my bank account and i couldn't even touch that girl Stop like i'm telling lame. you and i was like what am i gonna do how am i gonna do this like what is so i literally had nothing and I'm Start pregnant over. right oh my God. which mind you he was my son was not planned he was um I always say like he was never planned but he was God's plan for my life Ooh, yes because God knew that I would need him during yes. that time because I'm sure like I could have gone all the way to the left and mm-hmm. God was like nah girl mm-hmm. we have to bring you back bring you back um and a yeah, child will do that, give you that, I'm that you, other sense most of people, purpose. I'm telling you, most, for people, most people anyway. Yes. But like, I remember just being like, what am I going to do? And at the time, I had just so happened to sign with another agency out here. So I don't know if, Lord, I hope I'm not telling on myself, but I don't know if like the government or whatever just didn't, hadn't plugged that into whatever system mm, they have. Gotcha. Um, so here months, months and months. And then I started working more with the LA company than some of the others, mm. um, or agency. And then I started getting these checks, right. From an LA agency. And I was like, are they trying to punk me right now? Like, I feel like who sent you? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like they're trying to get me. Um, so here I am, I'm having to take these checks, go to like a check cashing place where they take like 10, 15, 20%, which like, if you ain't got no money, you right. need all your money, yes. right? I need it all. And so I'm having to use, like, prepaid, like, Visa cards from oh Walmart God. just to get on an airplane. Because, mind you, oh I'm still trapped. Yeah. Like, it was it was really, it was a tough time. It was a difficult wow. time. Um, and going through all of those things, because, yeah. again, and I only say these things because I never want anybody to think, okay, that's what they're talking about, but they don't know hardship. Right, no. Again, I know what it's like to not have anything. Listen. I know what it's like to have everything you could possibly want right. and, and come to find that's not even what you want either. Right. right? So all of these things are happening and it was nothing but the grace of God that I was even able to do the prepaid, like prepaid right. Walmart stuff, right. check cashing things because right. it was something, right? So Absolutely. all of that, and again, I have to give all glory to God because going through the tax audits, having to pay all the money, being pregnant, zero, no help. My parents did the oh, best man. they could, yeah. but also it's like, you know, what they can, you, know. They, what can, can they do? do? Yeah, yeah. What can they do? Like they still have to pay for their house yeah. and they have, we have to. And so have their um, lives. all of that to just say mm-hmm. that you can be in the absolute worst place that you could possibly be in, but continuing to have faith and know that like God's got you Girl, even after that, like, mm. uh, just the past couple of years, um, I've had a girlfriend that's like kind of going through a similar situation and she is like so stressed out oh, man. and, and I was like, wait a second. So girl, you know, I've been through that myself. She's like, <laughs> and she's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, like it was so tough. Mind you, like, you know. I'm sitting here thinking, how am I going to feed my child? Like, how am I, are we going to have a place to live? But mind you, now it's going to like, the Lord has restored all of it. Like Amen. own multiple properties, Amen. like own everything that, you Amen. know, that I have. Um, and again, it's just through, through the grace of God. And so we go Faith through, and rebuilding. come on. And we go again, we go through things in life sometimes to be able to like help, you know, um, whoever it is in, in, in the future, like exactly. just to have that knowledge exactly. to be exactly. able to, so that way maybe you don't have to go the same route that I went. <laughs> right. Right. But I went through it before. And let on. me tell you how yeah, I went exactly. through it. And now you're able to help her yeah. in her situation yeah. and have, you have that knowledge now. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, ugh. and that, that that's so much of what this is about also is mm-hmm. just like, I really hope, cause this 
has been this process and recording this podcast is becoming so healing to me to have these conversations with my friends and getting to um, know y'all better. You know, not everyone I've had on the show is like my best friend, but like someone that I've seen something in and I'm just like, there's something there and I feel like you have a message. And today, I mean, thank God that you came through because you definitely, you fed me, you fed my Mm -hmm. soul. And I know anyone that's listening today got so much from you. And I'm just so grateful to have you and to, for you to have just dropped so many gems, truly wisdom. (laughs) And I can just see in you, everything you've been through, it was all for a purpose. And I, I'm so grateful. Thank you. You know what? To God be the glory. All glory always goes up for me. And you you know that about me. Amen. Um, I I just thank you. Seriously, for for doing what you're doing and for, you know, I know this particular um, time together may have been all over the place. Who knows? I don't know. (laughs) But, um, but I'm grateful for you for stepping out in that faith and in that bold faith to, um, to use your platform and the platform that you do have, because you do have one. We Thank we all you. have a platform and not it yes. might not be on like mm-hmm. a crazy scale, mm-hmm. but you have the opportunity to touch whoever is in your circle and, and wherever they're at, right? And so I just appreciate you for not being on on the mountaintop. Thank you. And just celebrating that you're on the mountaintop because like, yes. oh I've made it and I've arrived. Right, and that's it. What you're trying to do is is such a beautiful thing and and, and I feel like there's so many different layers to it, right? As in Amen. um trying to 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 show that like we are all human beings yes. and we all go through different things. Yes. Um but we don't have to stay stuck exactly. in a past exactly. we don't have to stay stuck in a certain feeling we don't have to um we are not what has happened to us mm. you are genuinely who you choose to be mm. and it's not it's not just you know what i want to be this so so that's just the mindset that you have it's healing it takes healing it takes work it takes, time. It takes ta- so much time and do not let social media rush you mm. do not let what you see on tv rush you because mm-hmm. i mean we're behind the scenes girl mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. so we know what it really is um smoke and mirrors come on all of it <laughs> and so where you're at right now is exactly where you're supposed to be amen um don't be so hard on yourself. And I know that I, I've said this um, recently yes. is that even though I had forgiven so many other people, mm-hmm. I realized and the Lord helped me to see that I hadn't fully forgiven myself mm. for some of wow. the things that I felt like either I allowed to happen or if I didn't do this, then mm. maybe. And so it's easy sometimes, mm-hmm. right, to to forgive other people. and to, mm-hmm. But it's really difficult to forgive yourself. yourself. And so... I, I leave with that. For, forgive yourself for all the things that you thought had you done X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Because the truth is, is now you know. Now you know. 